free high quality education for all the students. So I'm doing it. So I'm doing for like documentary. I'm interviewing people that from traditional school and also it's parents. So hi, I'm Phoebe. I'm a ninth grade student. I tried the experiment high school is because they give students a lot of space to study and uh, create what they want and give them give them a lot of space to do what they want to do. So in first year PBL, we did a lot of presentation. So we have a lot of group work need to do, and I think this makes students uh, know better at what they are good at. So maybe they're good at leading. Uh, leadering, or maybe they're good at editing videos, or they're good at graphic, and I think that's really good for a student to know after they went to college or uh, get a job what they're really good at and what they want to do at future. Traditional education refers to a style of teaching and learning that emphasizes memorization, repetition, and conformity to establish norms and values. It often relies on lecture-style teaching and assessments based on recall, and uses the standardized test to determine students' scores. However, there's only been a slight change. Traditional education can be seen as outdated and impractical by some. It is often characterized by rote memorization and a focus on obedience rather than critical thinking. This approach can leave students ill-equipped to navigate the complexities of the modern world and may not fully prepare them for the challenges and opportunities of the 21st century. With the developments of human civilization, we should move on with the times and implement a better education curriculum. Education is different now. There is a new type of education that focuses on hands-on learning and it inspires students to think critically and interdisciplinary learning. It helps students develop soft skills and the ability to combine each expertise. This kind of education is more effective. It helps students get ready for the future and the society. John Dewey was an American philosopher, psychologist, and educational reformer whose ideas have been influential in the education and social reform. He was one of the most prominent American scholars in the first half of the 20th century. His works focuses on learning by doing and are regarded by some researchers as the founders of project-based learning. Dewey's theories on learning advocated a lifelong learning approach where learning happens when students interact during real-life tasks. Some people think the American philosopher William Hurt Kilpatrick, Dewey's successor, is the actual founder of project-based learning. William Hurd Kilpatrick defines PBL as a set of meaningful activities in a social environment that focuses on specific content or a theme. As such, PBL focuses on learning by doing, experimenting, problem solving, teamwork, social skills, understanding, collaboration, and partnership, and most importantly, about taking responsibility. There is a special school in Taiwan, one of the first schools in Taiwan to implement PBL as their educational concept, and they are VIS. I'll give you a story. Um, there's a curriculum that was handed to this teacher um, who was a makerspace type teacher. She's always hands-on. And she was given this social emotional curriculum that was handed to her and said, deliver this to students. And it's very much like a textbook, right? You're like, okay, here are your different levels of well-being. Here's what you have to do to be well. And it was almost like dictated, like let's lecture students um, into their social emotional well-being. She scrapped that and instead engaged the students in designing um you know, therapy types of therapeutic types of toys and therapeutic uh, methods for the elementary school. So our high school students were tasked to develop these and really develop a bit of a whole room that is dedicated to social emotional wellness. Well, lo and behold, our students immediately perked to life. They were excited. They're engaged. Um, they formed different teams. 
Um, they designed all sorts of things. Um, they designed different characters that would help them, you know, when they felt stressed um, out. They had a question box that came to, you know, questions, you know, learners had or things they wanted to share. So, you know, this is just a story anecdote to show the benefits of, you know, when projects are the driving force, all those attributes we hope to have in students, um, we start to see. Hi, my name is Rachel and I'm currently a senior and this is my third year in VS actually. So the reason why I decided to transfer to VS is because actually I've always been in a traditional curriculum since grade one to grade nine actually, so before high school. And so the thing about traditional curriculums is that there's actually a lot of emphasis on memorization of contents rather than like understanding. And there's Everything is so rigorous and you don't have a lot of opportunity to discover more fields. And so I think that is the thing that you could really consider if you want to go to experimental education is that you'll actually have the opportunity to put your hands on the things you you want to pursue your passions because we don't have them where curriculums are very flexible there we don't have a very um there's we, there we don't have a we don't learn about the same things actually everyone can discover their own interest and you could put actually put your hands on these opportunities and go outside of the world actually you don't have to always stay in school and i think this is about this is what like experimental school is really flexible and it will be really suitable for people who even though they don't have their like really um, clear interest you could discover and I think this, these are like opportunities that are only given to students who are like in an experimental education. Okay so I started PBL when I was in grade 10 so my first year in high school and so I think at that time at first it was my first time actually getting introduced to PBL and it was really different because yeah we don't have to learn from textbooks we don't have that much of a lecture it's more of the teachers will tell us about our main goals and topics of the semester and they will actually let you to go out and discover what what you think you should be doing and what you think like at the end of a semester you will want to present to the audience and like your parents so we don't have a very clear the only thing that's clear is your goal and the rest of the things is you actually could wait for yourself to discover So today we were working on growing plants, so we chose our plants uh, and then from there they're researching growing plants, harvest plants, and how to grow them in a hydroponic system. And this is the, the our engineers came up with these systems that they're building for us. So this will be what they're researching how to grow them into. Basically, uh, so basically this semester we're learning uh, planting plants with hydroponic system. So we've now we are just doing like uh, like planning like the three D things out, and then uh, the engineering team is working on like building the stuff, and then we are doing experiment about like the nutrients, the element, and how many plants can we plant in like like what's the most suitable plants for each system. Okay, hey guys, uh, today in PBL we are having a work day. So we are all working on the different things that we are doing in our teams. So content team here are working out what they're gonna write for the yearbook. Photography team are playing around, taking lots of different photos, trying out different styles. Design team are busy designing the layout of the yearbook. Um, I'm helping with them with that right now. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Tommy from Grade 10's Yearbook PBL. Um, I'm responsible for taking photos for events and also making video for PBL Yearbook. I'm really happy that the teacher cho chose me for taking photo for the events and it's, it's also one of my favorite hobbies, taking photo. And yeah, I really like this PBL so far. I think, I hope it will be like this for the rest of the semester. Thank you. 
So the end goal, I think, of our project really, as far as photography goes, I think we just wanted to give something that was a little bit, you know, different, like a different kind of style than maybe most people are used to with a uh, photography kind of like yearbook style where it's mostly just kind of like really nice lighting where this is a little bit harsh. It's a little bit more real. It's a little bit more, uh, has a little bit more emotion to it. Whereas I feel like the, the, your traditional yearbook style, it makes everybody look nice, but I think everybody's kind of seen it before. So we wanted to give something a little bit different. Uh, also, I think in terms of the entire project altogether, we kind of have this more kind of like, we're doing like uh, profiles of the school, of different classes, we're writing content for that. So it kind of has this kind of gritty, kind of journalistic kind of style to it. So right now in VI Snacks, we have six groups of students who are making six different recipes. So we have a group that's making an Oreo cookie cake. We have some groups making uh, nougat candy, Rice Krispie treats. So every group has chosen their own recipe and is testing it out so that next week we have a cooking competition. We find out which recipe is best, who is the most delicious. So we chose Rice Krispies because it's a simple treat, it's very popular, a lot of people like it. We had to make a survey and we just saw like which, um, we put cookie dough, Rice Krispies and something else. And then we saw that most people wanted Rice Krispies so we chose to make Rice Krispies. Our PBL so far we've been making foods and we've been learning how to make animations and websites. And we're at the end of the exhibition we're going to showcase um, the foods, animations, websites. And we're, we also like learned how to make logos for dietary requirements and learn about different dietary requirements. VIS Radio basically is a collaboration between our marketing program and one of our media programs. Uh, basically what we do at VIS Radio is we create video content about different subjects. So we have five channels who make different, uh, different ideas about the local community. Um, we also look at the marketing side of a media organization and basically have created this umbrella company of different channels which are tackling different issues about local issues around Taipei. What are your end goals and expectations regarding the VS Radio exhibition? Well, a successful project for us is if our students are confident enough to talk about their projects to their friends, family, uh, the local public and stuff like that. Basically, they'll be showing off their learning process, some of the skills they learn from media, some of the angles and strategies they've used for marketing, and basically bring it all together to celebrate having this media company that really is important for the VIS community. I think we've had lots of students who've done really well. We've had students who really were afraid to go up in front of a camera, and now they're very confident to talk about different, uh, different issues. They've learned how to script write, they've learned how to make a website, and I know like for example, Rachel's done a great job of going through and making blogs, enough that she's decided to go into journalism in university, and I think it's been a great experience for her, but not only her, but you know, the whole group as a whole. So how has PBL changed my personality? I think it really evident changes that Actually, I became like more adept to teamwork and like team collaborations since I joined PBL because PBL actually requires a huge amount of communication and teamwork. But like in the past, before I joined PBL, I actually like I'm more used to doing like individual assignments, individual tasks, and like everything is evaluated based on personal performance. But after I joined PBL, because yeah, we require a lot of communications between people and like group projects. So I think I've become more adept to um, this whole new style of learning and like collaboration. So a big struggle that I faced during the project is that since I'm in the marketing team of VS Radio, one of our tasks is to generate digital marketing content and I'm the blog writer basically, but I've never never like written a blog before. This is my first time. And so I was really confused on how to start. So I went online to find a lot of like examples of blogs that talk about different topics basically. And I wrote an initial rough draft. And so like in this process, the teacher assisted me a lot as well because I, I had to, win to go to Byron basically to like ask them for some basic blog guidelines and like how should I start and he gave me a lot of inspirations and ideas. So for example, right now I'm in VS Radio and VS Radio, the concept, we're kind of like a 
company or like a large cooperation, like we, we all the people we work as a cooperation as, as well. We have like managers and like team and like subordinates and, and also leaders. This is kind of like a real life company. And so, yeah, I think PBL really helped me adapt to like this working environment beforehand since it, like in the future I'll be like, I'll also be working in companies. So I think this is a very good experience. Sometimes you, you find out a timeline doesn't work. Uh, in your VIS radio, I'm sure you probably come across a guest maybe that you had to have and something came up, right? You had to be adaptable, um, you know, in that particular project. I saw two students, one was very academic focused and we had a project where they're developing their own business. And the one who was highly adaptable, who constantly changed their idea of what their business was gonna be week in and week out, was far more successful. And they actually ended up developing this business where all they were doing is producing better card holders for these kids' cards, you know, their ID cards, because they're always breaking. And they did leaps and bounds better than a, one team that decided they're gonna do a board game. Now, they wanted this board game, they had this concept, and it was kind of a cool concept. Everyone loves board games, but they never went and got feedback. They never went and asked people what kind of board game they want. They just developed this in isolation. And then at the end, the only person who bought the board game was the teachers, because we felt bad for them. So, you know, this whole notion of adaptability is one of the great skills that you're going to get if you really undergo a project-based experience that you're not going to um, get, you know, if you're sitting down at a table. We talked a bit about working on a team. I'm sure in VIS Radio, you have your various teams. At the end of each semester, VIS hosts an exhibition that allows students to present their work to the public. Both parents and strangers are able to see the student's work, and the student can proudly show off what they have learned and worked on in the semester.
like I learned a lot of things that uh, before I never learned and that's all really useful and I think it's necessary for my future uh, when I go to college where I have a job. In